That's NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland going back and forth in the House of Commons over the new Canada Disability Benefit. The Feds first announced the long-promised benefit in their budget two weeks ago. The plan to offer 600,000 people uh, with the benefit works out to $200 per month, which critics and advocates say isn't nearly enough. The NDP leader says it's a major sticking point in his negotiations with the Liberals over whether to support the budget or not. Let's bring back the front bench to talk about that. Dan Moulton, Shakir Chambers, Kathleen Monk, and Rob Benzie. Kathleen, I'll start with you. So mm -hmm. to the, the, the leader of the NDP gave this press conference today where he was supposed to come out, we were told, to say what he was going to do with the budget, support mm -hmm. it, uh, mm -hmm. in all estimation. And then instead he said, well, actually, I'm looking for some more clarity on a few more things. Is mm -hmm. there going to be, like, something that changes uh, based on what they've proposed in the budget based on this back and forth? Mm -hmm. Well, I think strategically wise, listen, you know, Jagmeet Singh has written himself into the story around the budget and the budget vote for the next few days. The Bloc and the Conservatives wrote themselves out on budget day. They said they weren't going to vote for it. So he he, he's still attracting that attention. People are wondering what's happening. And frankly, with the that confidence... That is a very positive spin. Well, yeah. Well, yeah <laughs> with, with the confidence supply agreement and with this budget, he needs to bring the receipts. He needs right. to bring the evidence, right, that he has done something to change the budget for the better for Canadians. So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to basically look at the disability tax benefit and see how he can make more people eligible for it, how he can make it potentially more <clears throat> beneficial with the provinces, forcing the provinces not to claw back as much. Um, we all know that $6 a day, which is oh essentially gosh, yeah. what this uh, disability tax credit amounts to, $6 a day, that's it, is not enough. And so Jagmeet is doing where he can and how he can to try to make it a bit better. He's also working on other issues, whether it's concerns around cuts to the public service, concerns around Jordan principle as well, which affects Indigenous children and health care. Um, so those are things that are really important to him. So he's taking the time to deliberate. He's bringing things to the attention of the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office and his team. And hopefully they'll come to some kind of conclusion in the coming days. Dan, do you think the Prime Minister and the people are, around him are worried about the possibility of Jagmeet Singh not supporting the budget? Or, and or are they willing to give a little bit on the issues that Kathleen mentioned? Uh, I think they may be willing to give a little bit on some of the issues mentioned. I'm not sure they're terribly worried about uh, Jagmeet Singh calling an election right now. Uh, the leader of the NDP would be committing political malpractice if he forced an election because he is almost surely to be devastated uh, in his seat count in that election right now. Sure, the Liberals are not looking great in the polls right now, uh, but let's look at the last several elections. Liberals have dominated progressive uh, voters. They've dominated urban centers. Uh, if there was a snap election that no one expected and Pierre Polyev was up against uh, Trudeau and, and Jagmeet Singh right now, I, I'm not sure Jagmeet Singh is going to fare very well. So I, I don't think he has uh, as much leverage as he's uh, behaving. What I will say is he could be doing a lot. Well, I hear a lot of what Kathleen said in terms of how he's writing himself into the story better than he's done since the confidence and supply agreement was signed in the first place. But I, I work for a minister of finance in Ontario on two minority budgets in which the NDP had the balance of power. Andrea Horvath and the NDP at the time did an amazing job writing themselves into the story by uh, in advance of the budget, outlining a list of demands that they needed to see in the budget in order to have their support. And after the budget came out, they released another public set of demands and held uh, Kathleen Wynne's feet to the fire or Dalton McGinty's feet to the fire in, in one budget and, and demanded uh, more things in that budget. And they did that in a very public exercise. And I, th I think he could be doing a lot more uh, to maximize the leverage he has in this moment uh, than he seems to be doing. It, it is not, uh, I think, the full extent of... Uh, his political capacity right now. At the end of the day, is he going to force an election? Probably not. But a great deal of uncertainty from now until the budget passing uh, would be to his political advantage uh, if he could uh, extract the kind of demands out of the government that, that he's uh, seeking here. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Shakir. I mean, he has been ha having the uh, you know odd sort of exchange with reporters. He was he was traveling last week, like everybody else was, in different ridings in, in the country. But he hasn't been as specific as what Dan just laid out was the case example in Ontario. Do you think that would have been uh, a, a strategy he should have employed? Yeah, I think when I when I see Jaime Singh, I, I think when people hear what he's saying now, they just hear a disagreement with the Liberal government. And I do think it's a larger term strategy for the NDP to create some separation from the Liberals. We're seeing it now on this policy. I think we saw it last week or two weeks ago on carbon pricing. I think Jagmeet Singh realizes as we start heading you know, towards E-Day, there's going to have to be some kind of distinction between those two parties. And the next election, in some way or another, is going to be about change. It's just going to be very hard for the NDP to approach that election, having the positions that they have, uh, without creating, you know, again, we don't agree on this policy or this policy. If they don't create that separation, heading into E-Day, they're just viewed as a Liberal Party. And I mean, that just kind of gives the election over to, to the Conservatives. So I think 
they have a longer term kind of strategic policy uh, rollout where I do believe there's going to be a lot more disagreements. Whether or not they can have those receipts on what actually gets implemented, there's a lot more disagreements to try to have it in the voters' minds that, you know, we are different from the Liberal Party, even though we prop them up, we believe different things. And as he would say, uh, having the NDP in power, uh, you would get these things the Liberals would ever, otherwise never do. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that as we move forward. Do you think they've used this budget, Rob, to that effect? No, I actually don't, Vashi. I really don't. I, I think it's posturing, and I understand why they're doing it, and, and I don't disagree with Kathleen. He's been effective at getting his name in the, into the stories, but no, no one serious that I talk to thinks that there's going to be an election before October 2025, and not just because scores or dozens of MPs will be qualifying for their six-year pension, the class of 2019. <laughs> Uh, those folks are going to get their pensions if they hang on until 2025. So all those Bloc Québécois folks who were saying, oh, yeah, we're going to vote against this budget, if suddenly Jagmeet Singh <laughs> yanks the rug from underneath uh, uh, Justin Trudeau, I will, I'll be very surprised if all those uh, Blockies show up for, uh, for a, a confidence vote because their pensions will be the ones that will be wiped out. Uh, so I, I just think, I'm, I'm, I know I'm sounding cynical, Bashy, but it's also realistic. I, I don't blame Singh for what he's doing, but at a certain point, he's going to break up with the Liberals at some point. It isn't going to be over this. Yeah, he doesn't even seem convinced himself that this is going to be the thing. Like, even the way he was talking today, Kathleen, like, mm -hmm. he was speaking in more of a, okay, these are the things I'm trying to get them to move on, and That's I want right. some more clarity, not like, I'm about to pull the rug any moment now, get ready no, for it. No, remember, he has to keep his caucus together, too, yeah. and ensure, make sure everyone is aligned on the decision and they're in agreement. But to Dan's point earlier, that's exactly the, the policy of kind of, like, setting up the pre-budget and the post-budget game. That's what we did with Jack Layton many times with yeah. the Harper government. And I I can remember verbatim every single journalist in the press gallery betting me that we were going to vote for the budget uh, in 2011. So what are you saying? I made not? cases and <laughs> cases of wine off that bet because every single one of those press gallery journalists was wrong. Because guess what? Jack stood up in the house and we're he voted very good against, at being wrong. Well, everyone is. Me yeah. too. Me too. But <laughs> the point is, um, you know, you can never really tell until that moment. So you right? don't think it's a certainty? I never think it's a certainty. Really. And I would disagree that I think that, you know, I think while, you know, the safe money might be on October 2025 for an election, I think it's probably more likely in quarter one of 2025, but it could even be sooner, right? You never know. Oh, my goodness. Dan this is politics. That's oh. why you got to keep on watching. Get your popcorn. Dan, what are your <laughs> thoughts on that? No, I just, I think it would be very misguided for Jagmeet Singh to go to the polls right now. He has uh, not had a good year. Uh, he would not be uh, positioned very favorably, I think, in the contest between Trudeau and Polyev right now. I think Liberals would continue to dominate uh, in places that they have in the last several elections when they're confronted with the New Democrats. Uh, and, and frankly, I don't think the New Democrats are prepared for an election. I don't think they have uh, the funds or the organization in place to be able to do that. So I, I have no doubt uh, that Jagmeet Singh will vote in favor of this budget when time comes. Uh, I hope as a, a fellow progressive, he's able to extract lots of concessions and, and get more from this budget. I just don't think he's done a very good job of it thus far. Uh, I, but I, I will say his performance in this moment right now is the best uh, I think we've seen from him since the confidence and supply agreement uh, was started. Last word to you on this, Shakir. I, I agree with Dan. I, I mean, I think uh, this budget is going to pass. Jeremy is going to support it. But I also agree with Kathy. I think the election will be sooner than we think it's going to be. Again, I think there's only so much of a runway that Jagmeet Singh has in terms of propping up this government before he needs to start making himself distinguishable between what the liberals are doing and what he's doing and why voters can look to him as a potential agent of change in the next election. I think we need to start like a pool, a pool. every Monday. Definitely like, and then, yeah, whoever wins the pool at the end for when apparently this election is any day now. Okay, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Our front bench: Dan Moulton, Shakir Chambers, Kathleen Monk, and Rob Benzie. I'm